Under Hubbard. Because some stories just need to be told. Others told more. A few told more fully. Or perhaps in a different way. If not in another light. Welcome to Conversation about some of the stuff that's just undercovered. This is Undercovered, the podcast with Bing Kimpo. Last week and Holy Saturday, my pre-recorded interview with the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, Dava Archbishop Romo Lavalles, aired on Radio Pilipinas and PTV4. That interview ran for nearly 18 minutes and focused on his message to the Filipino faithful. Our conversation, though, actually lasted much longer, and it was a fascinating discussion. The Archbishop was, all at the same time, inspiring, comforting, and candid. Here's a sample. Do you know who among the saints he prays to? Well, you'll find out later. So I thought of putting together the unused bits of that recorded conversation we had and posting it online. So here it is. Beyond the Archbishop's Easter message. Outtakes from a Radio Pilipinas interview with the CBCP President, Davao Archbishop Romulo Valles. Welcome back. COVID and quarantine have changed our lives immensely over the last several weeks. And the one thing we can all be sure of is that there is an unfamiliar uncertainty that permeates the air. It hasn't been easy. So for many of us, our faith has been a source of consolation and comfort. I asked the Archbishop, has this crisis, COVID, quarantine, has this brought forth a renewed sense of spirituality or religiosity? In the current situation, yes, no doubt, I think, It, it allows us like a, a second look, a, a second take of our faith manifested in prayer. I, 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 I agree with you. Hopefully, I, I'm right that it is a very difficult situation, but a situation that becomes an opportunity to reassess our faith and truly reconnect with the Lord uh, as we pass through these difficult, trying days. But second, I think what would catch our people's attention is the reawakening, reawakening of our capacity to love and serve. And going back to what I said earlier, and that becomes uh, attractive. Uh, this is not sounding like we, we are trying to uh, but we, we in, in Davao, but we in Davao, for example, silently uh, started to work, I think you mentioned it, to, to work, to arrange, to organize temporary quarters to medical frontline personnel in Davao. We have a huge hospital here, Southern Philippines Medical Center. Silently we did. Uh, Our, our Catholic schools. Now, I'm constantly receiving texts from this majority of them are nurses. It's how, how grateful they are. How, how ang kanilang pagtingin sa simbahan, ang ilang tanaw sa simbahan, that we are there for, for, for the well-being, there to do that. And I think this attracts, this inspires a, a renewed sense of church, a renewed sense of, of, of faith in these people. Uh, I'm in contact with a chief nurse of, of I, I presume I did not ask her, um, a chief nurse at M, M, SPMC, but the way she sounds in her text, uh, parang ang pulso ng mga, mga nurses that we have tried to help, very grateful to the Lord and very grateful to, to the church. But not only that, we also organize in Davao food banks, food banks for the most affected families and day-to-day income in tandem with the government para dilig magdubli. 
And, and that also, I'm sure, will be touching the minds and hearts of, of people. So, back to your question, would, would this lead to uh, a, a resurgence, a renewed sense of faith and belonging, belongingness to the church? My answer is hopefully, hopefully yes. And I would wrap it up by saying, we come out of this better persons. Better, a, a better society. Speaking of service, some have questioned the church's response to the crisis, asking, where is it? Where are its money, its facilities, its organization, its schools, its priests and nuns? I know that they are hard at work, that they are giving of themselves in many different ways, but their contributions remain undercovered by traditional and social media, not that they want them broadcast anyway. But the question is being asked, and it begs an answer. What is the church doing? Oh, yeah. Big. I was, I was not even really hoping for that question to, to, to come out. And you are true in your observation that we, we don't care so much whether it is known or not. But, uh, like, I tell you, in Manila, already, because when we started doing organizing temporary sh- shelters or, or quarters for uh, me- medical frontliner uh, uh, people, uh, then I contacted uh, Manila. The main diocese is in Manila. Uh, no, I know what I'm watching the news. I, I don't think I saw a clear report about this already. One. One diocese, I would not mention because he would be embarrassed, the bishop said, by Atosa, a week ago. He said, I am giving temporary quarters to 10 police PNP and diocese uh, of schools in Manila. So that's one example. Uh, then I asked I ask our social action in charge bishop. Bishop, okay. Tawagin mo yung secretary mo, uh, ipaki-contact sa mga diocese. Uh, for one thing, uh, which diocese ang nag- nag-organize ng food packs? Help for very needy families. Ay, ang report, ang dami. And one diocese, one diocese, I would, I would not mention, uh, but I, I kept in touch. Oh, kumusta ang nagkuha ng food, ba- food packs? And the bishop said, I already contacted the DSW, the ILG, or this WD in charge of the province. He said that we are ready. The way he arranged it, kayo muna. Ha? Kayo muna. Kasi hindi ba may budget man? Kayo muna. Pag makulang na, please me know because we, we would augment. And he directed all parishes in his diocese, and not, this is not, uh, uh, I would say, middle class diocese, that all the parishes uh, to allocate money ready for this. When the time comes now, Maglison, Bayer, then they would come up with their own program. Not that much, but complementing, complementing uh, the work of, of, of government. Uh, and to think, to think, being, Two months na halos, walang, walang income because no public masses. Oh. But this bishop said, no, we will be there for our people. Bosa, so uh, very nice question. Uh, maybe in the scale of, uh, of the, the need that we, uh, we have, maybe the response of the church is, is not that big. But right away from, the, from, from day one, for example, uh, it, the Lisod ma quantify, but for example, the, the quick cooperation of the church to say suspension of public uh, masses. Uh, it's a quick cooperation with government. Uh, that's that's, uh, that's uh, thinking that it is still for the good of our people. Now, when I first spoke to him a couple of weeks back, I wanted to discuss the National Quincentennial Commemorations to get his thoughts on the subject as both the church and the government are running parallel activities. 
I had a chance to speak with the National Quincentennial Commission a few months back and with church historian Father Emil Quilatan OAR as well. This time, I wanted to get his reflection, particularly as we have just marked a milestone. The first Mass in the Philippines was said on Easter Sunday, March 31, 1521, 499 years ago now. God, our Creator, our Lord, a Lord of, of life and love, His will, His desire is for us to share, in the words of Jesus, life, to have life in abundance. The first Eucharist in the Philippines is simply the celebration for the first time, we call it First Mass, of the sacrifice of Jesus, His power over death, celebrated in the sacrifice of the Mass. And in the, in the context of a meal, a sacrificial meal, that's why the host is, is food. The significance is the Lord wants us to participate in a banquet, to share the, the tremendous gift of life in, in the Lord. And that is the Mass. So uh, we know that the Lord allows us to feel that He is our, our Lord, that He cares for us in varying ways. But in the Catholic tradition, Catholic faith and church, we, we, we see that clearly in the act of Jesus. That's why we celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass, the sacrifice of Jesus, that is a celebration of the banquet of life, the banquet of redemption. And so when we remember that first Mass, again, signs and symbols perceptible to the senses, wow, we, in an explicit way, we worship God, praise Him, and thank Him because of the faith received. Now we are reminded every time we have the Mass, we are reminded of the goodness of the Lord, the salvation that He offers. That even if it is difficult in the journey of life, we're assured of God's protection, God's love, and God's care. If we had that many years ago, uh, that's, uh, that's, we remember that uh, the milestone, uh, it's almost now 500 years. Uh, it, it is very uplifting for the hearts of, of many to remember that we have realized uh, that, that, that gift of faith uh, symbolized in a concrete event the celebration of, of the first Mass. In other words, I encapsulize it by, by that act, uh, and we have continued that for the past uh, hundreds of years, or five, almost 500 years. Every time we celebrate the Mass, uh, it is in our consciousness that the Lord is always there for us. Just as an aside, with regard to the quincentennial of Christianity in the Philippines, I came across an academic paper that correlates the spread of Christianity with, believe it or not, epidemics. Smallpox, cholera, malaria, beriberi, these were the epidemics that came upon our islands during the time of the colonization. The paper said that many of those who were sick turned to the confession and baptism offered by the Spanish priests in the midst of those epidemics. Believing in life after death, our ancestors facing epidemics would have their children baptized for fear that they might risk eternal damnation if they died young. Staring widespread sickness in the face, they sought God's mercy and were comforted by it, just as we do and are now. At that point, the interview was coming to a close, so I asked him a rather personal question. I told you about this at the start, so here's the question. To which saints do you seek intercession in praying for an end to the in praying for an end to the pandemic? I, I saw that in your text. Uh, that's a very personal uh, question. Uh, first, okay, we we pray to the Lord, and we have the saints, the saints who would indicate, would inspire and intercede for us as we make our prayer to the Lord. 
personal answer. Uh, who would who would be among the saints? Who would be the, the, the best would be number one, as I said, to inspire us, uh, to intercede for us, to show us the way, the most perfect way, the nicest way to connect with the Lord in, in prayer. N- number one uh, would be what, what you see here, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. She would be number one for me. In this difficult days being, uh, why would I go to the Blessed Mother? As I indicated in my formal text of my Easter message, she knows she's not foreign, she's not, she's not alien to suffering, tears, pain in her heart. She was there when Jesus walked towards Calvary. She was there at the foot of the cross. See, Mama Mary. And therefore, when, when I pray to God, asking for the intercession of the saints, the Blessed Mother would be foremost there to inspire my heart, to show me the way, to keep my faith, and she would intercede for us like a good mother. And in fact, very words of Jesus, she is our mother. So she would be number one. Namunas siya. Uh, una siya sa akong intercessor. Now, interesting question. Next to that being, if you allow me to answer, I am a Bola, no? Uh, I was born, I was born uh, in, in Maribu, uh, and then moved to Davao after finishing my grade six in, in Maribu, Bohol. And our patron saint in Maribu, Bohol is San Vicente Ferrer. And a known saint for healing, as a saint that is favorite when we are in crisis, but especially healing. So, ningula akong pagka pagkabulanon, nilabas ang pagka nilabas ang pagkabulanon. So next to Mama Mary, uh, I have Saint Vincent Ferrer uh, always in whispers in my personal prayer these days, uh, because he has been there. Oh. You know, I do not know when it, our parish began uh, the Spanish time, but San Vicente Ferrer, and I know he's quite popular among the faithful. But next, next would be two, uh, two. San Pedro Calongson and Lorenzo Ruiz. Sariling atin, taga ato, taga mga mga Pinoy. They are, they, they are younger saints, kumbaga, in terms of recognition. But I would, I would, I would pray to the Lord through them. A personal bonus for me was that he remembers Father Francesco Pagliola. Padre Pagliola was an Italian Jesuit missionary who served in the Zamboanga Peninsula in the mid 1600s, establishing churches there and contributing to the growth and spread of the faith in that part of the archipelago. He was killed in Ponot, now Jose Es Dalban town, in Zamboanga del Norte in 1648. I have roots in that province and have been helping out in support of the Padre's cause for martyrdom. Here's what the Archbishop had to say. Now, I discovered me, Lani, a bishop there, a bit the bishop before that. Uh, basically, without the intervention of the church, people have been flocking to a particular spot in the Polo to pray there, to pray there, to pray to the Lord in the prayer but asking the intercession, uh, the, the prayer of this priest, Father Paliola. That, that is wonderful. Now, just a note. Why, why is it that that kind, before this formal action of, this formal process of investigating, documenting the life and martyrdom of Father Paliola, but why is it that before that, generations already, why is it that people are doing that? Mga subanan ni po, why is it? You tell me, the answer I think is clear, that through their prayer, uh, asking the intercession of Father Paluna, they have been doing that. They have seen results. They have seen, seen effects in their lives. I think that the answer is simple. And now the church formally has taken up the process of, of uh, 
uh, appealing and uh, hoping that Father Padilla would be formally uh, recognized as a santo in his uh, in Mindanao. So those were the minutes that didn't make the broadcast edit. Too bad the show that Saturday couldn't accommodate the rest of what Archbishop Valles had to say because he said a lot that I found truly inspiring and comforting. Inspiration and comfort. It's what we seek in our faith at this time of uncertainty. It's what we seek in our church leaders as well. And that's why I'm glad Davao Archbishop Romulo Valles, president of the CBCP, is one of them. This has been Bing with another edition of Undercovered. Thank you.